until about seven years ago or something, people really started to pay more attention because, hey, you got multiple, at least that's what I saw from my perspective. And I'm, well, I'm pretty young in the field in that sense, like uh, not, not 30 years of experience, basically. Um, but within those seven years, I saw a lot of companies thinking like, hey, we shouldn't just protect our secrets from the outside. Maybe we should also protect them from the inside because, um, you know, our developers, their credentials might get compromised. And, and that made them go like, oh, Oh, okay. Okay, let's 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 rethink. Welcome it. to the DevSec for Scale podcast, the show that makes security a first-class citizen for growing companies. Welcome back, everyone, to the DevSec for Scale podcast. I'm Jeremy Hess, head of developer relations at Achilles, and with me today is a really cool guest, Yerun Willemson, and he is principal security consultant, and he's an OWASP project lead. So uh, it's great to have more OWASP people back. Yerun, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, really for being here. Great, fantastic. So let's get straight into it. You know, today and for the next, uh, we'll we'll get two more episodes in at, at least as we planned, and we're going to talk kind of in depth about secrets management, sort of from the higher level of where it came from, what it means, how it works, down to the lowest levels of working with it in hybrid, multi-cloud scenarios. So uh, we have a lot to look forward to. And in this first episode, we're really talking sort of more about the trends and a little bit about the OWASP project that you're leading. And before we talk more about that in detail, uh, we all know that secrets management is obviously a really big deal. It's super important uh, for any organization. But what I'm interested in is in more of like a timeline uh, about how to understand like how OWASP decided uh, when they did to get into uh, the secrets management side of things and add content about that specifically. So when did OWASP actually introduce the secrets management uh, you know, ideas as a core security issue? So um, OWASP as a group of volunteers, of course, has many small initiatives inside of it and people start applying for a new project and whatnot. Um, and within those various projects over time, we actually saw uh, a lot of small developments about uh, around secrets management. I think one of the earliest things was, uh, which is unfortunately embedded, the old OWASP threat model project, where like a lot of attack service was enumerated. And there we saw something about secrets management as well. Later on, when, uh, of course, this is from my memory, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure that if people watch this that or hear this, that they will be like, no, 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 there was this project of mine, you forgot about it. And I sincerely apologize. Um, but later on, when we started working at the MASVS and the MCG new reboot, which uh, basically was uh, started by Bernard Weller, um, we then, you know, from a mobile perspective, started thinking like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wait a minute. How do you manage your secret on your mobile device? Well, <laughs> come to think of it, how did we actually make sure that we described that properly at the ASVS and the other points? And then it turned out that there were already quite some controls in place at the ASVS and there was some cheat making for key management for instance so there were these lots of small bits and tidbits going on and from that at some point uh dominic started to create a very early precursor of the uh chickens management cheat sheet and he asked like hey hey i got this cheat sheet i want to work on this can other people help us how to make this great but unfortunately he got no from many people i think this is already quite a few years ago and that was mostly because of resourcing we were either into the mcg or into other projects that really started blooming so it took a very long time before actually that secret cheat sheet sorry the cheat sheet from secrets management was actually finally getting somewhere um, at the same time, uh, I already did a lot of the secrets management just with various companies where I worked at as a, when I was a consultant at Xibia. Um, and uh, in the course of that, we actually came to, okay, um, now let's do something with secrets management more focused. But as you can tell by now, there has been this long history of, of many projects and, and small starts and whatnot to actually give secrets management some attention. But for some reason, it, it, it only started really taking off about one and a half years ago. But before that, it was all these small bits and bits uh, moving, but not really um, a real focus, a focal point in it or something. Everybody was like, yeah, this is just one of the things for mobile. This is one of the things for your web application, but not, but like, yeah, you, you know, the ASVS is huge. So it's one of the many things, basically. So that made it... Um, so it, it, it lingered around for many years already, I guess, but it really got attention over the last one and a half years, I, I guess. 
Great. Yeah. And that uh, we'll get into a little bit more about you and and the project that you're leading and how it sort of really gives uh, developers a chance to really feel what it's like to deal with secrets. Um, so moving on, let's let's get a little bit about your background, uh, what you've been doing over the past years and and how what what is that? How has that led you all to sort of getting to the OWASP uh, project? So um, I already mentioned Xebia, which is my previous employer when I was uh, a full-time consultant. Um, and um, uh, the nice thing about Xebia is that they really try to train you to become an authority because they believe for striving for authority. I'll never say I'm one, um, but at least, hey, um, I got inspired by them to, to, to help other people out. At some point, we were working for a financial institution at some mobile security SDK. And then a colleague of mine said, hey, you basically reverse engineered all that stuff to understand the security uh, of mobile devices that hasn't been documented yet by Google or Apple. Maybe you should do something with that. And 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 in parallel, there was this, uh, well, I think that was the version two of the Google Doc of, uh, of uh, the mobile security testing guide being developed. And, and, and that's where Bernard started kicking in like, hey, I want to do this differently. I want to make this grand. I want to do uh, I want to change how we do the SPS stuff. And that's basically where I started picking up with OWASP. And okay, well, then, then let's do this. The nice thing is that all of that actually happened, though that colleague I talked about is actually Nana Bars, who is a project lead for uh, 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 WebCode already for an amazing amount of time. Um, and, and so he already knew who to talk to. He knew where to get introduced to. So he basically just, um, yeah, uh, helped me uh, how to walk in, uh, in, in the world of OWASP, basically. Great, and so let's uh, let's talk a little bit here about uh, just in in brief. Give us a quick overview about uh, the Wrong Secrets project and uh, what what its goal is. So the Wrong Secrets project is two things. First of all, it's a vulnerable app where you can start hacking around, and you'll see many mistakes of secrets being managed wrongly or being configured wrongly in such a way that it's easy to obtain or easy to uh, to do something with. Um, and second, it's a, uh, it's a secret detection test bed. Um, and the test bed basically means you put a lot of extra secrets in so you can test your secrets detector to see if it can actually detect those. Uh, because one thing is, of course, finding private keys. By now, I think everybody starts looking for the begin private key uh, block or whatnot. But the harder parts are, for instance, uh, specific API keys for certain services that many people use and, and such things. So we try to add as many as we can. And we'll, that, that keeps on growing, of course, over time. Uh, so you can basically start testing your detector. Fantastic! Yeah, it's a great project, and we'll uh, we'll give out links and all that uh, a bit later. So, Yerun, getting back to the secrets management uh, and, and OWASP. So, OWASP obviously has top ten, uh, which is uh, you know very important or potentially the most important security issues that an organization should at least start to. Uh, you know, fix, find the gaps, you know, secure them and all that. Uh, where would you say, though, that secrets management, because it's not really listed, I mean, there is the cheat sheet, uh, secrets management itself isn't one of the top 10, but where would you say that that secrets management idea actually sits within the OWASP top 10? So I thought about this quite a bit, like, okay, should have its own topic. But the funny thing is, it hits all the topics in the top 10. Literally, it does. Um, if you look at the wrong secrets challenges, and right now we've got 24 of them, I believe, um, then there's all sorts of mishaps you can have, and that will touch uh, various of these uh, uh, of these uh, uh, top 10 items. So, for instance, um, uh, one of the challenges is that you will find a secret being locked to uh, to to the container logs. So this is more about uh, security logging and monitoring failures because we just output that and we forward that to our own for logs, so you can actually see that. And then you know, hey, that's something I can use. But overall, yeah, a lot of it actually comes from security misconfiguration, where you think like, hey, I got this secrets management system. I think we can easily use that. Um, and then by some default open configuration, something goes completely wrong. Similarly, this also falls into insecure design, where you can say like, okay, we, we try to um, do proper threat modeling. We try to understand what went wrong, and then we still misused it or, or configured it in a way that doesn't make sense. And then, of course, um, um, uh, you can also have your um, uh, problems if it comes to um, um, uh, cryptographic failures, where uh, we have a few examples where we show, like, look, you can 
definitely apply some sort of encryption or some sort of hashing. But if you do that in a too weaker form, you'll end up with the same problems. And then, of course, there's broken access controls is one of my favorites, which is the number one of the current top 10. Um, is if you try to make sure that you um, uh, uh, leverage IAM in a way that somebody just can't get to the secret, but you make a mishap somewhere in the groundwork of that, you'll end up exposing the secret after all. So overall, most of these things is actually, most of the top 10 items really um, uh, are, are, are useful in there. Of course, there's also um, uh, something that's maybe a bit harder with software and data integrity failures, because now you have to do weird things to get to a secret that leverages one of the other top 10 items. But hey, now I just mixed up the, the eighth one as well in secrets management. And then the fun thing is, what you often try to protect with the whole security shenanigans is your secrets. And there's all sorts of ways to make mistakes. And therefore, actually, the whole list applies. You could at some point even say, like, hey, if you have, like, uh, an application that uses uh, some a, a middleware to basically talk to the uh, AWS Secrets Manager, what if you could do a server-side request forgery to play like you're that, cert that given application with its identity provided? Um, and then, again, talk to the AWS Secret Manager and actually get a secret. So hey, now I even got the tenth in. So so yeah, it, it actually applies everywhere. Um, uh, although it, it's a side effect of uh, of these top ten items that you might get, you know, that as part of a uh, security misconfiguration, you get breached and your secrets getting leaked, basically. Yeah, it's one of those things where I I kind of wanted to try to find a way as working for a, a company that does actually, you know, work in that field, it's like, I think we should be a topic. We should really be in the top 10. I mean, <laughs> it's one of those things also with, uh, for example, CISOs, when they're looking at budgets about, you know, all the uh, cybersecurity stuff that they have to deal with and all that, where it's like, well, you know, secrets management should be a line item too. Like why, why is secrets management not a line item in your whole list of things? And so it's uh, one of those, uh, hopes that uh, we'll actually manage to get it up there one day. And uh, I'm sure Wrong Secrets could play a, a great role in helping uh, developers to uh, manage that side of things and understand how important uh, it truly is. So uh, that's uh, it's, it's a great project as well. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later, like we said. And getting into the next uh, question, you know, we, we we have like there's movement in secrets management, right? There's it's things have been moving and evolving constantly. Uh, when would you say though that sort of secrets management as like a, a real concept and a security issue, you know, that for you know security and developer teams that really it was something that they should tackle um, as a, as a formal uh, problem within the organization. As in when from from when in timelines that we saw this starting to evolve, or or do you mean more like hey, when should you pay attention to secrets management? Uh, yeah, I I think I think it's kind of both actually, right? So if, if the first part would obviously be like where you know what at what time you know what, when did organizations really develop this understanding of we need to do something more than just put our you know our secrets into our code or into a configuration file, and also you know where should companies be looking to in start uh, dealing with this, uh, you know, in their, the, the life cycle of the company. Definitely. So um, the first time I encountered this was about eight years ago, I guess, uh, where you saw people already putting secrets in a secrets management solution. It was part of a automation tool set, uh, but I think it was there before, but I just wasn't active in that field yet. Um, but back then, it really was about, okay, you got this black box solution of a commercial vendor, I forgot the name, where you need to put your stuff in and hope for the best. And the hope for the best part is where everything went wrong because developers had to move on and weren't sure if it was always uh, retrieved timely from the secrets management solution. So they ended up doing creative things. <laughs> and I don't mean creative things for the right, for the greater good, but actually very inspiring for wrong secrets, basically. Um, and ever since then, I think we saw many more secret vendors popping or secret management vendors popping up and um, many more platforms like Kubernetes and Nomad and whatnot to actually give support for secrets. Um, but in parallel, we saw this whole uh, uh, configuration is not that easy concept where all of these platforms also started to accumulate complexity, basically. Um, in parallel to that, 
way before when I just did architecture work, basically, we already, of course, had secrets management in terms of HSMs. So if you would shout secrets management, that's about 12 years ago or something, people would say, yeah, yeah, but we don't need an HSM, right? We're good, aren't we? Um, and I would go like, yeah, well, maybe you have other things to protect and just keys that we don't necessarily need. How about having keys to, I don't know, protect your database password? No, that's the work of the DBAs. We don't know. No, we don't have to care about that. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, and you know, in this sort of way that 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 became all black box alike. And I think until about seven years ago or something, people really started to pay more attention because hey, you got multiple. At least that's what I saw from my perspective. And I'm well, I'm pretty young in the field in that sense, like uh, not not thirty years of experience basically. Um, but within those seven years, I saw a lot of companies thinking like, hey, we shouldn't just protect our secrets from the outside. Maybe we should also protect them from the inside because um, you know our developers, their credentials might get compromised, and, and that made them go like, oh. Oh, okay. Okay, let's 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 rethink this. Let's rethink. Hey, wait, what is in our code? Let's rethink this again. You saw this whole movement, the whole I think um in parallel there was a shift left part going on, but it I don't think this necessarily had to do with the shift left. I think this had more to do with developers becoming more aware of hey, that let's hope for the best is getting very annoying by now. Let's 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 fix this. So we got this from ops, from devs, from security, and from compliance. Everybody started thinking about, okay, how can we do this better? Not necessarily having the right solutions, but at least, you know, rethinking their strategies. And so within organizations, as they they grew, you, you do see more organizations sort of only getting to this much later on? Or did you also see uh, some organizations manage to catch this as like a really early symptom saying, we need, a, we need to tackle the secrets management problem? So um, uh, I think I saw both. Some, some are more like we need output value, whatever that may mean, right? And, and, and that's where business says it needs to be something sellable and usable, not necessarily safe and secure. Of course, it needs to be it, but needs to be something else than actually spending the budget to do so, right? It's two different things. Um, but in the financial industry, we see more and more, for instance, fintech saying like in a very early stage, yeah, um, which secret manager do you guys know how to use? And then, you know, a couple of brands get shouted and they're like, okay, let's buy one, select one move because we'll have more secrets as we go. So let's just, you know, hug them in or, um, hey, which platform do you want to use? Um, Okay, let's let's lame one Kubernetes or uh, or or Nomad or or OpenShift or whatnot. Okay, let's um let's let's start seeing how we can actually make sure we can uh, put uh, sensitive things in and not necessarily mentioned as a secret by them, but at least you know you already get the feeling for at least let's put them somewhere that they're more segregated basically. So um, uh, I think you already um, have that in the early stage if it's. Uh, for an application or, or a sector which actually shouts security like financial industries and more and more healthcare, for instance. But there's also lots of industries where you still, at the starting point, a startup might say like, yeah, we'll fix that later. <laughs> because it's just not that um, um, visible to them yet at that point in time why secret management should be a problem, even if you're just trying to provide a better marketing plan for your customers. Absolutely. So we've talked about getting up to this point uh, up until now. So what do you really see when you're looking at the state of secrets management now? Um, what are you looking at in in the future uh, as sort of like the problems that need to be tackled or the things that are going to change uh, within you know this domain? Sort of. First thing is, uh, I think we're still in the awareness part of the game. Um, you see more and more people becoming aware of, hey, we need to actually protect our secrets in a better way. Um, and more and more people is, again, across across the board of all the rules that we have in IT. Sometimes it's your admin, sometimes it's your ops guy in a DevOps environment, sometimes it's a security dude or the CISO. And sometimes it's even just... Um, a functional tester that's like, hey, I was at this company which actually did this right. Shouldn't you do the same thing? You know, it, it comes from all directions. That's great. 
But awareness is one thing. It will take a while before that boils down, basically. At the same time, in parallel, we see uh, the complexity of platforms rising. In, in the old days, we, we we forgot half our configuration, got bombed pretty quickly as well, actually. Um, but you know, you would just host an application to the server and hope for the best and make that work somehow. Um, but now with the many type of ways how you can actually uh, provide a runtime environment for application like serverless, um, uh, containerization, workload manager orchestration, and whatnot, um, we end up in a lot of different complexities. And of each of those uh, ways how you can deliver your application in the end, um, you do need to do something with secrets management. What you often see is that, yes, some of the solutions are cross-compatible across all of these different platforms, but because of that, they're highly pluggable and therefore somewhat complicated, or they only limit their secrets management to um, a secret type X, Y, and Z, because all the others that are deeper inside of, hey, this very specific runtime environment need more help. So, so we still, I think we will see more growth in terms of supporting all these various platforms and the various ways of how we can do compute. Um, and, and, the, and, and, and I think the very next stage will be uh, consolidation as in, okay, how can we now simplify this? How can we, because you see this urge after the com more complicated um, uh, uh, runtime configurations come, you see this urge for simplification which often ends up in oversimplifying stuff, which is then again made complicated because, hey, we forgot about whatever. Um, and we see the same with secret management solutions. Everybody first promises, hey, you just need to do this. And we'll take care of all of it. All of it but that. Yeah, that does not cover it either. And then slowly that starts being covered and the solution becomes more complicated and we stop to step back again. And because of that same complexity, um, it's hard to um, take an active stance in, in your awareness. So let's assume you got awareness and okay, we need to fix this. And now we go into secrets management. We see all these somewhat complicated secret management solutions for our very complicated runtime environments that we created ourselves because we thought it was a very brilliant idea to make it more complicated. Um, and now we need to you know get that to work safely. And that's not easy. That's a lot of work actually, lots of studying to understand what we have to do. Of course, those who have done it right already will be like, ah, it's easy. But then we often forget, we first went through the phase where we're like, wait, what? Let me read that again, because this is tough stuff. And we have to do this right. Um, so what I really hope for is, together with the awareness, is that more and more uh, ways of doing compute will become more alike, and that it becomes easier to actually integrate your secrets management into that. And in parallel, secrets management solutions to... Um, to uh, easily support that. So that at some point, it doesn't matter which type of compute you use or platform to run your applications on, you can just pick any secrets management solution to make that work. That's hopefully the future. Um, I think it's still a long way to go, uh, especially on the compute <laughs> that, part, making it simple. I think that I feel like that's uh, an issue that, that we see in, in pretty much every sort of uh, part of this whole industry is connecting everything at the end of the day. It's, uh, you know, with APIs and different languages and all that, trying to talk with each other is, is never simple. So hopefully over time that in general becomes easier, which would make the job of connecting something like secrets manager much easier to all the rest of your tooling. Um, so the last question I wanted to ask, uh, you is, um, if people want to try your project, where could they go to get started? So uh, I think it's easy to in include a link maybe to the readme of the project repository. Um, if you want to start locally and you can run Docker, just run our, uh, just pull our container and start running it. Um, but if you want to try something online, uh, we have various online uh, uh, free service that we're using like Heroku um, uh, and a few others. I think we can include the link. Uh, we have Fly.io recently up in the air uh, and we have, what's it called again? I always forget, uh, uh, Octito, I hope I pronounced it correctly, uh, online, so you can actually do Kubernetes challenges as well. And I hopefully that will get you started to get a feeling for, hey, uh, what can I do wrong with secrets? And people can also contribute, I, as I assume. Uh, yes, definitely. Um, Feel free to file issues if you're like, hey, hey, we're missing this type of challenge or, or hey, this doesn't work for me or uh, I tried to resolve that it didn't work. But if you want to uh, um, 
all BRs as well. We already have about 16 uh, people, I think, that uh, work together with us on the project. Um, and um, yet it's still growing. There's a bunch of people that already expressed, like, look, I'm working on this and that, and I'll pull requests when, uh, when anything's coming. So there will be new challenges pretty soon as well, actually, for new uh, contributors. Fantastic. Thanks, Jeroen, for your time. I look forward to uh, continuing the conversation and hopefully we'll get uh, Ben in as well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. I really appreciate all your time. And uh, everybody uh, listening, remember to stay secure and uh, have a great day. Thank you so much for having me. It was really awesome. Talk to you soon again.